Hi, I'm Dr. Diane Duckett, and welcome to another episode of Becoming You. This podcast is to help assist you in becoming a better successful you in life and in business. I am delighted to share with you today on just that. We know that becoming a better you takes work. In fact, it takes a lot of work, work that we sometimes really don't want to do on ourselves. So today, I want to talk about where are you? Where are you? Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for listening to another episode of Becoming You. Yes, today I want to talk about where are you? Where are you? I want to read for your hearing uh, this evening, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and I will be reading from the Amplified Virgin for your hearing. And it reads this way, there is a season, a time appointed for everything and every for everything and a time for every delight and event or purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up as lost, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear apart and a time to sew together, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. That is found in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse uh, 1 through 8. Um, As we all know, all of life is made up of seasons. We know that. And each of these seasons are marked for our lives. Oftentimes, it can be so easy to let the season you're in define not only how you feel about why you're in that season, but also uh, may define who you are. But can I tell you, who you are is not defined by the season you're in. It's just the season of where you are, right? Um, And so the season you're in helps define who you are. That's why we have seasons. We have four seasons that we go through every year, the spring, the summer, the fall, and the winter. And whenever we enter any of these seasons, we understand what season we are in where we are. And so we dress accordingly to that season, but not so with individual seasons or spiritual seasons. Our individual seasons can be different from someone else's season. And when we come upon our individual season, we may not know how to respond to that season as we do with the four seasons, the the, uh, spring, the summer, the fall, and the winter. Uh, Just because you are in your individual season does not define uh, who you are and who you are becoming. Now, I know you may be asking, what does this have to do with becoming you? What does it have to do with becoming you? Well, as you are becoming you, seasons that you enter will teach you something about you. That's why Ecclesiastes 3 shares with us these different individual seasons, these seasons uh, that, you know, will show us, uh, you know, what season we're in and what season uh, was happening in these different types of individual seasons that we're in. And these seasons will help shape and mold you to becoming you, right? But not define you. The season will not define who you are, but it will help you to become you. I say it does not define you because you can be in a season of mistakes. How many of you know that you've made a lot of mistakes in your life and um, you believe that those mistakes may have defined who you who you are today? Um, but can I tell you, your mistakes does not define who you are, um, but your mistakes should help 
teach you something about yourself. Or it could be a season of self, right? Meaning selfishness. But your season of selfishness does not define, you know, uh, who you are. It does not say this is who you are. This you are, it doesn't say that you are a selfish person because some people will think that if they're in seasons of uh, selfishness, that they are selfish, that this is their core being of uh, being, uh, you know, selfish because they, it's all about me, myself, and I. But can I tell you that, you know, your season of selfishness is not what's the, uh, who is not who you are and it doesn't define uh, who you are. And so your season of selfishness or mistakes does not define who you are or who you are becoming. As a matter of fact, you may have a defining moment, but the season will not define you. Why? Because the season has shown you something about you and wants to teach you something about you. So understand that whenever you're in an individual season, um, there are seasons that, you know, are, are good seasons. There are seasons that are not so good seasons. There are some terrible seasons that, you know, each and every one of us may not want to be in. Um, of course, I wouldn't want to be in all those seasons, but sometimes those seasons have to happen um, because those seasons have to show you something about you. You know, it has to show you something about you and it has to teach you something um, about you. And so if you have been in a season of maybe, let's say, rejection, right? That rejection it did not define you. and That, de that rejection doesn't say uh, who you are, but that rejection is teaching you something about you. It's showing you something about you. If you're in a season of abandonment, um, that uh, season of abandonment is not... Um, you know, saying this is who you are, you know, uh, or defining you, but it's showing you uh, something about you and it's teaching you uh, something about yourself. And so we have to look at these seasons as something that is going to grow us, grow us and mature us into becoming who God has said we are to become, right? And so whenever you're in a season, you cannot take those seasons, I'm going to say personally, and most of us, we do take seasons, individual seasons that we end personally, because we feel as though that these seasons that we come, come into that, um, and that can be, and they can be unexpected seasons. We feel as though these seasons that we come into, um, basically kind of like shakes us up and, you know, take, uh, takes us off guard. And we just don't know how, uh, to even respond to that particular season that we end. And some seasons that come may not be seasons that we brought on ourselves, but those was the seasons that had to show up um, in our lives because those seasons, that season, whatever that season may be, has to show you something about you, right? It has to show you something about you, and it has to teach you something about you. And so whenever you're in a season, you have to ask the question, okay, so what is the season uh, trying to uh, say to me? Like, like, what is this season trying to uh, say to me? What is this season trying to teach me? What is this uh, season trying to show me? You know, and basically, how am I supposed to respond, you know, in this season? Because we know that when we are in the four seasons, the spring, uh, the summer, the fall, and the winter, we know how to respond to those seasons accordingly because we know that those seasons are coming. We know that when springtime comes, we respond to what springtime brings us. We know that when summertime comes, we know that uh, what uh, summer time bring us we know when fall comes we know what fall time brings us uh it brings us cold weather it brings uh falling leaves and all that all of that stuff right uh but we know how to respond to it and also as uh winter uh we know how to respond to those seasons but when we become enter into our individual seasons how do you respond to your individual season because your individual season is very important um, because your individual season is going to help uh, propel you into your next, right? It's going to help propel you into the next dimension or the next, you know, phase or chapter of where God wants you to be. And so you must understand uh, the season season that you're in and don't take that season personal, um, but um, really take that season and grow uh, from that season because that season wants to show you something about you and that season wants to teach you uh, something about you. As we see in Ecclesiastes chapter three, it tells us there is a season Season, a time appointed for everything and a time for every delight and e event or purpose under heaven. So um, it even tells us that 
you know, you could be in a season of, you know, uh, being born and, and a season of dying. So what does that mean? A time to be born and a time uh, to die? Well, of course, there's a time for us to be born. But in between the bo being born and, in, and and the dying, there is something that's taking place where God is, you know, showing up and showing off um, in our lives. And then some, you know, it, it, you know, it has to end at some point, um, at, at some point. And so uh, we uh, will have that type of season. And it could be not just a season of birth, you know, where someone is being born, um, but it could be um, a season where ideas are being born, right? Ideas are being born, and in between, you know, those the born, the being born, and the, and that idea probably dying off. Um, there's seasons that you know are showing you what's happening uh, be between the two, and so you might have an idea that's being born um, now, but at the end of the day, that that idea may die. For instance, you know, I love the store. Uh, New York and Company. Yes, I love the store New York and Company. And recently I went to go shop at New York and Company um, at the mall and found that, you know, it was permanently closed. So I was like, okay, why is this store permanently closed? And so I looked to see if, if the other location uh, was open, but that location also too was permanently closed. Um, and so I, I say this to say that, you know, there was a season where New York and Company had, uh, uh, had had born an idea, right? But in between, um, you know, in between, they did what they needed to do uh, with the idea, but then the idea died away. Why do I say this? Because uh, let's say, uh, the, and, and it died uh, within the pandemic, right? The pandemic, maybe they couldn't, you know, uh, uh, pay the bill, or maybe they couldn't keep up with um, the loss that they was losing, you know, revenue or whatever. I'm not sure. Um, but of course it faded away. I mean, they still have the online, uh, store, but the, the, the regular, uh, uh, brick and mortar is no longer, um, available, um, uh, to the public because it's, it's permanently closed. And so, um, it died, you know, the, the brick and mortar piece died, but the online piece is still, you know, there. Not, no, not, I don't know how well they're doing online, but it's still there. Um, but, you know, their season of thriving and flourishing um, and being all that they can be uh, for, you know, uh, the idea that God had gave them, you know, eventually, you know, kind of uh, went away. Um, and so you will have seasons where, you know, you were born, you will, you will uh, uh, birth some things and then some things will just die. And it's because of maybe, you know, seasons of difficulty, seasons of hardship um, that cannot sustain um, the idea that was given to you um, in the beginning. Uh, it also says a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted. And so sometimes you will plant some things, um, and when you plant those things, um, you have to water it, uh, you have to nurture it, you have to, you know, uh, pick out the weeds and stuff if there are weeds uh, around what you have planted. Um, and if you don't take care of, you know, what you have planted, guess what? It's some, it may have to be uprooted, right? It may have to be uprooted so it can either maybe be planted again or just, you know, it's useless. It's like, you know, when you're in a garden, when you're in a garden, um, a garden uh, to, for, you know, things to grow in your garden, like vegetables or flowers or plants or whatever you're, whatever you're doing in your garden, um, you have to plant it first. Uh, you have, and what what you're planting is the seed. You have to plant it. Now you do have some uh, plants and stuff that that are already you know um, bloomed, and you just uh, put them in the ground. Um, but you still have to plant it first so that it could grow. Um, and this is what when we're in seasons, when we're in individual seasons, uh, we have to look at those seasons where you know those seasons are sharing with us that you know we have to grow, we have to mature. We may not uh, be uh, in the mindset that we need to be. Uh, to really become who God has truly called us to become um, because of the limit uh, the, uh, the limitations that we put on ourselves uh, where we uh, think we can't but God thinks we can um, and so we have to uh, believe that you know what God is allowing us to plant we have to water it we have to water it uh, so much so that you know it grows uh, and it matures 
Um, and that's what us, we have to uh, water it and grow it uh, so that we can mature. And, and how do we do that? It's the word of God. The word of God, we have to plant that seed of the word of God in us, you know, uh, uh, day and night. You know, uh, Psalm tells us that we must meditate, you know, on God's word day in and day out, right? Um, for God to really be able to, you know, uh, mature us you know, in us becoming who he has created us to become. And so we must look at our seasons as as uh, the seasons of, you know, um, growth, uh, the seasons of growth, uh, or, or even you can even say transformation, uh, transformational growth, um, like a butterfly. You know, a butterfly can't turn into a butterfly unless it goes through a process, you know, of being liquefied and all that that stuff uh, for it to really become a butterfly. Well, it's we're just the same, you know, because we're humans. Humans have to go through a process. And if we don't want, if we don't go through that transformational process, guess what? We will never grow. We will never get through uh, seasons that we should have been, should get through um, because we're not uh, nurturing ourselves in the word. We're not, you know, uh, uh, feeding um, off, of, off of the word so that we can grow and mature. And that's why um, some people are still stuck in seasons from ye years ago um, and it's because they can't get out of that season um, because they haven't you know learned from that season they haven't been nothing has taught them uh, uh, what they should what they need to know uh, in that season uh, that season didn't show them uh, something about about themselves um, and so uh, some people will stay stuck in a season because um, they just don't know how to respond to the season. They may be responding to the season negatively, negatively. Yeah. And so they stay in that season, um, until hopefully somebody come and help pull them out. Um, but yeah, you, you ha you're being seasons for a minute because, um, you just don't know how to respond to it. And whenever we're in seasons, we have to know how to respond to those seasons that we're in because those seasons can either, uh, make us or break us, uh, but um, it should grow us um, in the process. You wonder why, you know, people may be still, um, you know, uh, depressed or stressed or uh, just not themselves. Um, and it's because maybe a, a season has set them back. You know, they got a setback and they just could not uh, move from that setback because of all that was uh, entailed in, within that season. Because, you know, you can come into a season and it could just be one season, everybody. It can just be one season where it's, it, it, if it ain't one thing, it's another thing. And it's like it's, it just gets thrown on you and it just piles up and piles up. And sometimes, you know, uh, if it gets too overbearing, it can, it can overwhelm you where you may feel like you're about to lose your mind, right? Because of so much that is happening within just that one individual season. Come on, just that one individual season. And so how do you snap back? you know, from, you know, that season? How do you um, em even embrace the season that, you know, you're in? Um, because that's another point that we have to do. We have to be able to embrace the season. And like I said earlier, don't take it personal, uh, but embrace it. Because when you embrace it, that um, embracing uh, says that, you know what, I am open to whatever this season is uh, bringing to me. And whatever it is that God wants to do in me or through me, um, I, I'm going to do it because I'm going to embrace every moment of the season because the season is teaching me and showing me something about me. Not about the other person, but about me. And so what is it that the season is showing you about you? Yeah, some things you're going to have to uh, plant. Some things uh, you're going to have to uproot. But what is that season uh, showing you uh, about you. Um, uh, it also says that it's a time to kill and a time to heal. You know, some things may have to die um, because it's just it's just not, you know, uh, serving you in the capacity that you needed to uh, serve you. Uh, people may blame you uh, for the season that they may be in, but the season that people are in is not because of because of them or because of you, um, but it's because that's a season that had to happen. It was a necessary season uh, that, you know, one had to be in. And like I said, it's because that season has to show you something about you. Um, that season has to teach you something about you. Um, maybe that season, maybe the season that you're in, God, God is saying, you know what, 
it's time for you to kill some things in your life because these things that you know are are attached to you is is not part of my will. It's it's not what I what I've called you you know uh, to be in right. And so sometimes you know your season will tell you, okay, now it's time for you to kill off some of this this stuff that is weighing you down, some of the stuff that is not um, good for you, some of the stuff that is not. Um, and God's will, some of the stuff that you may be even walking in di- disobedience with because uh, you chose to do that, right? But now it's time for you to kill that noise, kill that stuff, because that stuff uh, is not uh, doing you no good. What it's doing is it's just holding you back and it's just messing up your mind, you know, and your thought pattern uh, because you, you got so too so deep into whatever it is or whatever it was that you were so deep into and it wasn't in, in alignment uh, in, in uh, alignment and in harmony with God's will. And so God is saying, you know what, now it's time for you to kill that thing. Kill it and, uh, you know, let it die because that is not the will and the plan that I have for you to help you to become who I have created you become. And when you do that, it has to be a process of healing um, because sometimes when you've been in something for so long um, and you try to kill that thing, uh, that thing may hurt you to the core. It may hurt you to the deepest core. But now it's time for you to get yourself together. See, God is showing you that now you can heal from it. When you heal from it, um, you can now move uh, to the next phase of what it, what becoming who God has created you to become. And so what is it that uh, you need to kill? You know, what is it what what is it that needs to be killed or what does what is it that need to die, you know, in your life uh for you to really show up for God, for you to really show up for your assignment, for you to really show up in becoming you, becoming who God has created you to be. And I understand that, you know, some things are gonna be, you know, hard. It's like an addict. You know, when an addict is trying to get off drugs, you know, uh it's it's hard because they go through these withdrawals and stuff like that. You may go through some withdrawals. You may go through, you know, some shaking. You may go through some headaches. You may go through whatever it is that you go through to kill that noise yeah um in your life so that healing uh can begin because you cannot heal if you don't get rid of the thing that you are not supposed to um have you know if you don't get rid of the thing um that uh that is not in alignment you know or or in, in harmony uh with God's will uh for your life and you wonder why you know things are um probably uh seem hard for you right it may seem hard for you it may seem like you know uh you can't you know as soon as you come up uh from one thing here's another thing and it's because this one thing that you need to kill or the several things that you need to kill or you know or let die um it has to happen so that you know god can begin to uh continue to flow um in your life right um so that um you can move forward um, in your destiny and in your purpose. And so until you're able to kill the thing uh, that is not supposed to be a part of you, you cannot heal. Uh, you'll walk around, you know, uh, looking like you're you're not healed because of something that has grabbed a hold of you. Um, something that you may have been entangled with for many months or many years or whatever it may have been. Um, but you will not be able to experience healing until you get rid of the thing that is not uh, supposed to be attached to you. Um, also, too, there's a time to tear down and a time uh, to build up. And so, so what Ecclesiastes is doing here is it's showing how we uh, come into individual seasons. And I believe that we all experience these types of seasons. We just don't know that we're experiencing these seasons, but we all experience these type of seasons, but we just have to know what season that we end so that we can, um, you know, respond uh, accordingly so that we can respond um, in a way that's going to help us to grow, as I said, and help us to mature. Um, And so there's a time to tear down and a time to build up. Um, And so, you know, uh, when you're in a season that, you know, you have to tear down, you know, uh, maybe the ego, maybe um, uh, the the, the selfishness, maybe, you know, the false self, um, the, the, whatever, yeah, the false self, the ego, the selfishness, all, it's like the self, you got to tear down uh, the self uh, for you to be able to uh, uh, begin to uh, build yourself back up. Because so long, uh, many have been operating in the false self, thinking it was their true self, and it really was a false self because they allowed their ego to get in the way. They allowed uh, selfishness to get in the way. They just allowed self to get in the way. And so 
um, you know, uh, you can't be built up until you tear it down. Uh, the self, the false self, not your true self, but I'm saying your, your, your false self. Um, because, you know, uh, people uh, these days sometimes are just not operating in their true self, their authentic self, um, but they're operating in a false self because uh, maybe they're trying to prove something, you know, to the world or maybe they're trying to gain um, some attention, you know, or want to be seen or whatever. And that is nothing but serving the self um, and the self is what we're not supposed to serve, um, but we're supposed to, you know, be our true authentic self. And so once you turn down, if you're in that season of uh, turn down the self, and that's also meaning that you're doing some self-discovery, right? Uh, tearing down the self is that you're doing some self-discovery. You're re reflecting on yourself, um, reflecting on, you know, the positives and the negatives and all the negatives that, that you don't like about yourself. Those are the things that you're going to work on uh, because guess what? That's the season that's showing you something about yourself and it's, and it's teaching you something about yourself. And so when you're in that self-discovery stage, uh, or self-discovery season, um, you have to embrace it because uh, God wants more from you. Um, he can't get more from you if you don't understand you, um, if you don't go through that self-discovery process. And many uh, don't think that they need to go through a self-discovery process, but we all need to go through a self-discovery process because we have to put off the old and bring on the new, that old, that old false self that, you know, was, uh, condescending, that old, that, that self that was, a, that was lying, that self that was cheating, that self that was disrespectful, that self that maybe, uh, was, uh, 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 uh betrayal, that self that was re, uh, rejecting folk, you know, that, that self, whatever that self is, that self that was serving self, that's the self that, you need to tear down because God wants to put you in a place of self-discovery so that you can know, uh, truly know your authentic self. And so that's why you're in that season, uh, to get rid of, uh, uh, anything that is not like God, um, so that God can build you back up. Um, because it says it's a time to tear down and a time, uh, to build up, but you cannot be built up unless you tear down the false self first and then, uh, allow God to build you back up. The right way. Also, it says it's a time to weep and a time to laugh. Um, and so, you know, some seasons will have you crying all day long. It will have you crying all day long. Um, and you may be tired of crying because, you know, that's the season that you're in. Um, but then after you have weeped, after you have cried, after you have, you know, uh, you know, blown your nose or whatever, you know, there's going to be a time uh, where laughter is going to come into place because I believe that God is a humorous God and God will make you laugh, right? He will make you laugh and he will make you laugh out loud. Um, and so no matter, you know, uh, the weeping season that you end, the word of God tells us that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So you may be weeping for a night, uh, you may be weeping for a month, you may be weeping for a year, but whatever your weeping is, guess what? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Laughter is going to come um, in the morning because God is going to make you laugh. And he's going to make you laugh out loud. And so remember, the seasons that we're in, the seasons that we go through are seasons to help um, show us something about ourselves and teach us something about ourselves. So it's not about anybody else. It's about you. It's about fixing you, fixing uh, you uh, from the head up, from your head up to the to, to the bottom of your feet, right? Uh, God wants you to be whole, uh, be healed and be whole um, because whatever assignment, you know, he has for you um, as you are becoming you is one of uniqueness, one um, that's going to... Um, uh, glorify God, one that's going to just change the narrative of so many people's story because you allow your seasons to teach you something about you and to teach you and to show you something about you. And so remember, use those seasons, you know, um, in a way that you're going to embrace uh, the season so that you can become the vessel, become the person uh, that God has created you to become. And so Yes, you will weep um, in some seasons and then you will turn around and you'll be laughing in a, you know, in that same season or at the end of that season, you'll be laughing. Then it says there's a time to mourn and a time to dance. And so 
sometimes the morning could be, you know, uh, something that's ending or something that you lost. Um, it could be a traumatic event. Um, it could be, you know, uh, yeah, tra 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 traumatic event where, you know, you mourn the loss maybe of a loved one or a relationship or a job or whatever, but then there's a time to dance. Um, so um, even though you mourn, mourn in the beginning of a season, guess what? You're going to be dancing at the end of the season because, like I said, remember the season seasons show up to show you something about you and teach you something about yourself. Um, there's a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones. Um, so some, some stones, you know, you're going to throw away. Um, and those, those uh, stones can be maybe in the realm of um, unforgiveness, right? And so you're going to now probably uh, whatever that whatever someone has done for you, you're going to throw that stone of rejection. You're going to throw it away. You're going to throw that stone of depression. You're going to throw it away. You're going to take that stone of anger or, uh, yeah, and you're going to throw it away. You're going to take the stone of bitterness and you're going to throw it away. Whatever stone um, that is not... Um, that has um, put you, you know, in a place of not you not being you or you not becoming fully you. Um, those are the stones you have to throw away. Um, and then there's a time to gather stones. So the stones that you're going to gather is the love, the peace, the happiness, um, you know, the joy, the generosity. Uh, you're just going to, you know, gather the stones that, you know, will, um, you know, uh, allow your, your, uh, allow yourself to like brighten up lighten up because uh you gather these stones of positivity and so the negative stones which i had said earlier which is bitterness anger um depression uh maybe a stress uh whatever it may be uh those negative stones you want to you're going to throw those stones away because those stones um you know just just tore you down those stones just didn't do you well those stones just kept you stuck or you know uh, stuck stuck between a rock and a hard place so those are stones you're going to throw away but you're going to gather stones that are healthy for you um stones that you know that's going to bring you joy stones that's going to give you uh gather stones that's going to bring you peace uh, and joy and love um and um all of those uh fruits of the spirit, uh, gladness, those fruits of the spirit that, you know, we need to have, you know, and, you know, with us, because that's what we are supposed to, supposed to be. We're supposed to have, you know, joy, peace, love, happiness, you know, meekness, all of that. Um, but we have to gather those stones. So we cannot hold so tight on the negative stones because when you hold so tight on the negative stones, man, those negative stones, man, they just don't serve you at all. I mean, like, you know, you see people, they gain weight and they may do some emotional eating. Um, they may uh, work long hours, never come in, come in the house because they, you know, got some negative stones that they're dealing with. Um, and so you got to be able uh, to throw away those stones that just put you in the place of you just not being you. Uh, you just not being you. Um, but pick up the uh, gather stones that, you know, it's going to allow you and help you, uh, to be you, you know, um, if you're a people person, but you right now in this season can't be around people because of all the negative stones that you may have, uh, maybe people did you wrong. And so you just don't want to deal with people right now. Uh, maybe it's, you know, rejection. You just, you know, feel like, you know, uh, rejection just hurt you, hurt you too bad. Um, it could be abandonment or loneliness. You know, those are the stones that you want to throw away because those stones are just keeping you, uh, stuck. You know, it's keeping you stuck between a rock and a hard place. You know, you want to move, you know, you want to get up and move, you know, you want to get up and do things, you know, you want to, you know, serve God well, but because of these stones, these, these, these negative, uh, stones, um, they just got you. And so you got to take those stones and you got to throw them away and you got to gather stones that are going to be good for you. Um, a time to embrace, you know, we're sometimes we're in seasons where, you know, it's a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Um, and so you may, you know, in the beginning of a season, you may embrace something very well. You may embrace your assignment, uh, very, very well. You may, uh, embrace your calling very well. You may embrace you very well. Um, but then that's going to be a time, 
uh, to refrain from embracing, you know, um, embracing uh, you, embracing um, your calling, embracing your assignment, um, because that's just the season that you in. Remember, I said, you know, each season that you in, individual season that you um, enter into, it's going to show you something about you and it's going to teach you something about you. And so even in the embracing and uh, and uh, reframing from embracing is teaching you something about you. Um, because sometimes we embrace too much. Like sometimes we're being, uh, yeah, we just embrace too much. And when you embrace too much, you may be crossing boundaries, boundaries that you shouldn't cross. And so uh, that's why you're going to have time to refrain from embracing because those, uh, because you've embraced too much in the beginning of a season, you cross boundaries. Um, uh, you cross boundaries and you cross boundaries that you should not have crossed. And so now you have to refrain from embracing because you need to stop crossing the boundaries because God is trying to show you something about you and he's trying to teach you something about you. And so you got to, um, you know, know that, you know, there's going to be a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. So sometimes you got to just, you got to, you got to watch how, uh, you really truly embrace, you know, embrace things, embrace people, embrace things because uh, too much embracing can get you, um, you know, put you in a place where you should not be uh, in, put you in a place that you shouldn't be in. Um, so you got to refrain from um, embracing that may be, you know, closing your door, locking your door because um, you don't want to cross boundaries. That may be, you know, doing exactly what you need to do for that day and, you know, moving, moving, uh, moving, um, moving forward. Uh, and, uh, so you won't, uh, be in a position where you have to embrace and cross boundaries. So there is a time to embrace, but those, that time to embrace is not meant to really cross boundaries, but it's a time, it's a time to embrace God, the goodness of the Lord and what God is doing, you know, through, you know, you and through his people. Um, but sometimes, you know, that embracing can go a little bit further, as I said, where, you know, you're crossing boundaries. And so uh, when it's time to refrain from embracing, it's because boundaries have been crossed and God wants to show you something about you and why you crossed the boundary and teach you uh, something uh, of, um, teach you something about you um, of why, you know, you need to stop crossing those boundaries. And so there's a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Also, too, you may be in seasons of searching. You know, it says a time to search and a time to give up as lost. Uh, so you may be searching, you know, you may be searching, you know, for, you know, um, your quest, right? You may be searching for your quest. Um, people uh, want to know, you know, well, who am I? Where am I going? Um, and that's the search, uh, you know, for the meaning of life. Like, which the, what, why am I here? So you may be in that season of searching, uh, searching your soul, um, to thy own soul be true, right? Um, so you have to, so sometimes people will be in a season of searching, uh, their soul, searching, you know, uh, you know, the core, um, of themselves so that they can really understand, uh, who they are, um, and why they're here. And then there's a time to give up as lost. And so some things that you search for, um, it could be you're searching for, um, if you was adopted into a family, you may be searching for your parents, right? Um, but, you know, you've done, done all your searching and you still can't find who your parents are. And so you have to give that give that up as a loss. And so some sometimes some searching, uh, in your searching, some searchings will uh, uh, not bring you um, the results that you uh, are looking for. And so you have to give up as a loss. Um, as a time to keep and a time to throw away. So you may be in uh, seasons where, you know, you're going to keep some things and you're going to throw some things away. And so what is it that, you know, you can keep um, where God is showing you that, um, showing you something about yourself and, and, and teaching you something about yourself? And what are the things that God is asking you to throw away? Um, and that's when you have to really uh, be really... Uh, uh, in tune with with who you are, in tune with uh, your core being, uh, your core being. It's like your values, your beliefs, um, your belief system. So some people, you know, they will make up, they will have like a value and a belief system, right? But they will say, okay, this is my belief 
and this is my values, but they sometimes will deviate from their belief and values, right? Um, because I guess they think that, you know, at that moment, um, they don't want to uh, hold hold on to that belief or hold on to those core values that they have for themselves. And so some values and some beliefs people will keep and some values and some beliefs people will throw away. Um, so what is your values and what is your beliefs, you know, about you, about yourself that, you know, you can keep and what are, you know, values that, you know, that are really not values, but it's just, you know, selfish, selfish values, um, that you need to throw away. Um, and I don't know why I'm talking about values and beliefs right now, but I think that's, that's, uh, sometimes why we get into seasons because we deviated from our values and beliefs. Um, and so we have to re evaluate, um, what our values and beliefs are so that, um, we can keep those values and beliefs that, um, truly, um, hold us to our core values and throw away, uh, those beliefs that don't hold us true to our core values, if that makes sense. Um, and then we are, we can be in seasons, uh, where, um, it says a time to tear apart and a time to sew together. Um, and so some seasons you'll be tearing things apart. You might be tearing the house apart. Come on. You may be tearing the house apart and looking for something. You may be, uh, just, uh, just tearing things apart. Um, and then, you know, you'll sew it back together. You'll put it back together. Um, so tearing apart, maybe throwing away stuff that, you know, um, is no longer needed because you want to, uh, you want a fresh start. You want to start out fresh. Um, and then that's what they mean by sewing, uh, back together. Um, putting, you know, re, re, um, redesigning, um, your life, um, re, yeah, redesigning your life. And so there's a time to tear apart and a time to sew together. Um, then it says, um, we can be in some seasons where, um, there's a time to keep silent and a time to speak. Um, and so this is a season that I believe that everybody, laddie daddy and everybody will come to some point in their life. Uh, they will be in this season, a time to keep silent and a time to speak. Now, you know, when you come in that season where you have to keep silent, that's a hard thing for a lot of people because a lot of people just they just can't keep silent they just want to say what they want to say and they want to get the last word right but there's seasons that you know even though you want to say what you want to say even though you want to get the last word um you have to keep silent um because silence speaks volumes did y'all not know that silence speaks volumes um it, it really speaks volumes and it shows um a part of you it shows people a part of you um, that is unique and different. And so uh, when you have that season where you have to keep silent, um, also, too, that silence is showing you something about you and it's also teaching you something about you, right? Um, and so you have to embrace your silent seasons because your silent seasons is going to show up in a way that is going to amaze you. It's going to it's going to just, it's just going to do some amazing things. Like, um, I know I've been in that season, um, of silence and that silent season is uh, um, like, almost like to me, it was uh, like a great season, um, because, um, you really had to depend on God. You really had to allow God to speak on your behalf. Um, because what, if you would say something, it might just come out in a way that, um, may not please God, right? Um, and may just put you in another rut. So the keep silent in the season is a great uh, season because that means that God really truly wants to teach you something. And God really truly wants to show you something about you, about yourself. And so and then, of course, there's the time to speak. And when God allows you to come out of that silent season into the speaking season, it's going to be a glorious thing because everything that you speak about you know, it's going to be, uh, something that's going to glorify God. Um, and it's because you've, uh, learned something about yourself in the silent season and you was, uh, taught something about yourself, um, in the silent seasons. And so, um, I say to everybody, when you, when you come upon that season, if you have not come upon that season, if you are in this season right now, embrace this season fully because this season is going to be the season that's going to show up and it's going to show off in your life because God truly wants to show you, you. Um, and so there's a time to love and a time to hate. And so 
uh, we know that, um, you know, uh, love can be um, a difficult thing for, for many. It could be a great thing for a lot of people, um, but it could be a, diff a difficult thing for many. But a time to love, you know, that's me. That's loving, even loving your enemies, like loving your enemies. Like, wow, God wants us to love our enemies. And so even though um, um, we may not want to love our enemies, God still wants to love our enemies. I, I was thinking about a book, um, Who Are You When No One's Looking? I believe it was uh, written by Bill Hybels. And, you know, he had uh, certain uh, chapters in there about love, tough love, uh, agape love, um, loving from a distance. Um, he has so many loves and I can't remember them all. But, you know, when there's a time to love, like there's going to be, you know, a love that's going to be up close. There's going to be agape love. There's going to be tough love. And, you know, there's going to be love that you have to love people from a distance. And so that's going to be maybe a season. If you haven't been in that season, uh, or if you're in that season, um, or get to that season, you may uh, be in that season, um, a time to love. Um, so, like, I've been in that season a couple times where, you know, I had to love people from a distance. Um, and sometimes it's hard to love people from a distance, but you have to, when you love people from a distance, you help and you're actually helping them because you're not, you know, enabling, you know, them or anything like that, um. So when you're when you in that when you're in that season of loving people from a distance, it's actually helping them um, because you're no longer enabling them. But then you have your love, agape love, as God's God's love. Um, you know you have you know your uh, love for your mom, your dad, maybe your spouse, your children. Um, so you know there's certain kinds of love that's just going to show up in uh, a season or even maybe different seasons and many seasons. Um, then there's a time to hate. And I say, you know, when you're in this season of a hate season, it's because maybe someone has probably done you wrong. Um, I remember when I was uh, molested, like the person that violated me, I literally hated that person. Like I hated that person. Every time I saw this person, I wanted to throw up because of what that person did uh, to me. But um, I had to turn around and like literally forgive, even though I still kind of hated this person. Um, I still had to forgive this person. And so, um, sometimes, you know, when you're in that season of, uh, you know, hate, uh, that means God is trying to show you something about you and teach you something about you. And my thing was God ta taught me how to forgive, how to forgive the person that violated me, uh, you know, at a young age. And so I had to turn my hate for that person and to forgiving, uh, forgiveness for that person. Um, but the forgiveness wasn't just for that person, but it was for me as well so that I can move on, um, in life. And so you will be in seasons where God, you know, wants to heal you in that way, because sometimes when we move and operate in unforgiveness, God can't really show up for us because we haven't forgave. We haven't really forgave. Um, and so, um, um, God may have you uh, in that season, uh, it, when you have that season of time to hate, may have you in that season to, to correct some things um, about you, about your mindset. Um, you have, uh, and, and when I, and you can look at the hate as uh, the racial injustice, uh, prejudice, you know, blacks against whites and um, how people just, you know, are just being, you know, they, they just hate. Um, they just, they just hate. Um, and God wants to, you know, correct our mindset when we're in that season of hate so that because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? And so if God so loved the world that he gave, that means that, you know, the hate, um, love is stronger than hate. And so we must uh, begin to change our mindset uh, so that that hate will not um, um, be in us. Um, because if you carry hate, every time you turn around, some type of um, aura uh, is going to spill off of you because of the hate that you have maybe for someone um, for someone or for something. And so uh, when you're in the, in the season of hate, that time of hate, I believe that God, you know, is showing you something about you um, and teaching you something about you and wants you to correct, yay, hey, 
correct something about you, all right? And so when you're in that season, uh, please embrace it because each season, each individual season that we're in, we truly have to um, embrace it and embrace it fully. Um, and then finally, it says um, some seasons um, may be a time for war and a time for peace. Um, and so a lot of people go through spiritual warfare and really don't know that they go through spiritual warfare, but it's warfare within yourself within you um because maybe it's because you, you you just not understanding what's happening or what's going on or why you have to go through uh certain seasons right but um god um, when you're in spiritual warfare that means god just wants to get closer to you he wants you to get closer uh to him uh so that you know he can fight your battle so that he can fight for you right but because you know when you in spiritual warfare you're in spiritual warfare and spiritual warfare is no joke right and so you need god to you know, uh, you know, be, uh, fighting for you, um, on your behalf, um, because, uh, spiritual warfare is just no joke. Um, so when you're in, uh, you know, when it's a time for war, um, just like the civil war, uh, world war, uh, the, uh, world war one and two, um, all the wars that we've had here in America, you know, um, even with this, um, what you call it, uh, pandemic, the, the, the virus, um, I think that was a, some type of war where we all had to get vaccinated. You know, some didn't and some, a lot of people did get vaccinated. Um, but it brought upon peace um, because uh, people were taking action. Um, they was doing something to end the war of coronavirus. I mean, it wasn't a war that was, it was a war that was killing people, right? It was killing people just like out of the blue. Um, and so the vaccination came where... God brought about peace, and now, you know, the world is open, well, our world, Maryland, is open up, you know, um, to where you don't really have to wear a mask if you've been vaccinated and stuff like that, but then you have other wars uh, that people have been in, um, just like, um, that people have been in where peace needs to happen, um, and so even in the uh, seasons that you're in war, rather it be with yourself or with others, uh, God wants to put you in the season also to uh, bring in peace uh, to yourself and to others. And so um, embrace that because, like I said, I'm going to keep saying it, it's, it's, it's a season that's uh, showing you something about you and teaching you something about you. And so I don't know what season uh, you're in right now, but you are not the season you're in. Uh, this season is where you are. And so each season that you are in individually, know that, um, you know, that's not a season that's going to define you. That's not a season that tells you who you are, but it's just a season of where you are. You know, it's, it's just a season of where you are. It's where you are right now. It's where you are right now that God wants to take hold and he wants to show you uh, something about you and teach you something about you so that you can move forward in understanding um, and becoming you. Um, and so, like I said, the season is where you are, not who you are. This is a season and it won't last forever. So no matter what season you come in, it doesn't last. It doesn't last. The season has to end. Uh, when we look at the four seasons, uh, spring, summer, fall, winter, those seasons have to end because we, we can't stay in a, in, a, in a spring season all year long. We cannot stay in a, a summer season all year long. We cannot stay in the fall season all year long. We cannot stay in the winter season all day, all day long. Those seasons have to change. Even if you live in Florida or Texas, guess what? The seasons change. Um, it, it changes. So they might not get the winter season as bad as, you know, uh, another uh, state. Um, but guess what? The season has to change. So the season change where um, they respond to it accordingly. So I uh, know that your individual season is just the same. It doesn't last always. That season has to leave. It has to go at some at some point. But let me tell you this: don't take um, what um, don't take the season uh, with you to the next season, right? Um, like I shared with uh, once before. Like if you're in a winter season, you know, wearing your boots and your sweaters and your hats and your scarves. And you get into springtime, the spring season. Don't take your winter boots and your hat and your coat and your gloves into your spring 
season because you're just going to get hot. Like, it's not it's not even appropriate. You know, that's not even appropriate for that spring season. So just like your individual season, once you get over one season, don't take, uh, don't take, um, you know, something into your, into the next season that you may be in, um, and adding on to that season. No, don't do that. Uh, no, no, learn from the season, learn what show, whatever God is trying to show you about you and whatever God is trying to teach you about you, learn from it, embrace it and, you know, move on. Um, because guess what? We're always going to be in a season. We're always going to be in a season. It could be a good season. It could be a negative season. It could be a so what season. Um, but we're always going to be in a season. Um, we, it could be a season where we're on a mountaintop, you know, where it's like, oh, I could just stay here, but it's going to be a season. Um, so we're always going to be in a season and every season that we, uh, come upon or that we enter, we have to ask the question, God, what is it that you're trying to show me about me? Not about somebody else, but about you and God, what is it that you're trying to teach me, um, about me? Uh, so that, you know, you can truly become who God has created you, be, created you to become. I believe God has something for you right where you are. Um, and if you just trust him, he'll not only sustain you in that season, your individual season, but he'll also prepare, prepare you for the next one. And so where you are with the season that you're in, trust God. Trust God in, in that season, whatever season it may be in. Um, if you're in the season, whatever season, if, um, let it be, you know, embrace it and, and trust God in that season because God is trying to um, show you you and teach you something about you. Uh, when you know who God is and who you are in him, you can find strength in God because God is not going to allow you to go into to a season and die. Like he's not going to allow you to go into a seasoning and, and, um, and, uh, and get and like, what is the word I want to use? Get all cracked up. Like, you know, go crazy, whatever. No, trust him. He's going to give you the strength in that season, but you just got to trust him. Um, so no matter what the enemy may try to whisper, you know, in your ears, know that God is with you. Know that God is for you. Know that God, you know, is all around you. And so God is going to give you strength for the season, the current season that you re, uh, that you're in, regardless of how that season looks. God is still going to be with you. He's going to be for you. Um, and he's going to give you the strength and the grace, uh, to get you through that season, uh, that you in. And so, I want you to just ask yourself the question, you know, what season are you in and how do you feel about the season that you're in? What is God, excuse me, what is God trying to show you um, something about you? What is God trying to show you about you and what is God trying to teach you about you? Because every season that we come into is all about God helping us to become who he has created us to become. It's not about anybody else. It's all about what God wants to show you about you. And so I say, embrace the season. Embrace the season that you're in. Embrace the season that um, God allows you to be in. Because it's a season where God is fixing you. Where God is shaping you. Where God is molding you. It's a season where you may have, you will have, you should have. Some defining moments, a defining moment about you, about who you are. Remember, your seasons don't define you, but your seasons should bring about defining moments for you. I'm Dr. Diane Duckett, and thank you for listening to another episode of Becoming You. Thank you.